Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Games Edition. So in the last video that was made on this channel, Games Edition, uh, reviewing a motherboard, it got nearly a thousand views. So I'm guessing you guys like that kind of content. So make sure you smash the subscribe button and hit the like button. So let's get uh, into this review. So as the other mother as the other motherboard that was on the channel that we um, uh, reviewed slash unboxed, uh, this is the MSI one. However, that was a MSI A320 Pro. Pro Max. This is a MSI B450M A Pro Max. So to some of you this motherboard might look familiar on the channel because the last video I made which I'll have a link to uh, in the iCard uh, was building a gaming PC and this motherboard is the exact motherboard that was in that build. Um, so at the moment the motherboard is not in the box. I've actually got in a system for you guys. So there will be a part two to this video where I'll actually be using the motherboard, going through the BIOS, going through what things come with the motherboard. So I'll give you guys an example now. So this motherboard actually has something called Realtek Audio, where you can have some home cinema, you can change equalizers and uh, etc. However, we'll get onto those things in part two. So um, since we not got the, since we don't have the motherboard with us right now, the next best thing is the back of the box, which gives you a lot of information. So I'll be back with you guys when we're there. Okay, so here we are at the back of the box. Let's see what things this motherboard has. So as you can see just from the image, let's get this to focus, it has a M.2 slot. So let's actually move on to the M.2 slot first since that's the first thing that I've spotted there. So it has a Turbo M.2, so unlike a normal M.2, which is 10 gigabits per second, the Turbo M.2 on this MSI motherboard is 32 gigabits. Let's get that to focus. There we are. Transfer beyond limitations. Now, obviously, this is only for this motherboard. Some other motherboards might have a higher gigabit per second. But for this motherboard, it's 32 uh, gigabits per second for that Turbo M.2. Now, there is only one M.2 on this motherboard. But for a budget motherboard, that's perfectly fine. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll get into the price of this motherboard. So if you want the price, just skip to the end. Or if you're a true viewer, uh, carry on watching. Right. So now it talks about the quality of the components so as you can see here it just says latest evolution in high quality components and then it talks about the uh, sound now the sound i'm not going to be able to get in depth with it on this video however wait for the part two and that will be getting in depth with the sound the bios and etc so also as you can see it has dual dims for the m.2 so you can put dual channel but you can't put quad channel because there's only two dims and another thing you're probably going to notice is if you're a computer enthusiast is that the power design for the cpu is only a four pin as you can see there it isn't the uh, usual eight pin so on my uh, on my gaming ring uh, on my gaming rig i have an eight pin connector however this one has a four pin so bear that in mind so if you do have a power supply that has an eight pin connector you're going to have to buy a conversion uh, connector to go into the 4-pin as the 8-pin uh, connector won't work. However, on some power supplies, like the Corsair one that I have in my rig, you can actually separate the 8-pin and it'll fit in there easily. However, it will be a little bit messy, so it depends on what you want. If your power supply can actually uh, separate the 8-pin, go ahead. But if you want something that's more clean, then you're probably going to want to get an adapter uh, for that. However, the 24-pin is still the same, as you can see. Still the same, and... It, it does have these two annoying brackets on the motherboard, so if you're using uh, the AMD cooler, then you're going to have to take these brackets off. However, if you're using a water cooler, some water coolers actually just clip onto the hooks. So there's a hook there and a hook there. Some just clip onto the hooks. However, if you're using an air cooler, I think you've got to take these off because in the gaming rig build, I used the AMD stock cooler and I had to take these off, these brackets, for me to actually get it in. Now in the previous motherboard video, I realised that a lot of you guys were asking what CPU does the motherboard support, so what generation. So obviously this is an AMD motherboard as you can see by the socket. It's AMD Ryzen motherboard, AMD. Uh, so the CPU it supports, as you can see, is the first gen, second gen and third gen. So there it says it again, so it supports uh, even CPUs with uh, Radeon Vega graphics, second gen and... 3rd gen, well I've got a 3rd gen in, 
However, it doesn't say that here, but it does support third gen. There we are, so it tells you there. Support second gen, Athlon, Athlon X4 desktop process, uh, processors for socket AM4. And then it tells you the chipset, which is the AMD B450 chipset. And it also tells you the graphic interface. So let's talk about uh, storage. So one of the main store, uh, so main storage is going to be SATA, obviously, because not many people can afford M.2s, uh, especially high capacity ones. So you've actually got in total, you've got four SATA, uh, four SATA spots. So you've got two here and two on the bottom. Depending on your case, um, you'll have two that are probably in the right orientation for you. So if your case has better side mount, uh, a better area at the bottom, like my case does, the Deep Cool Matrix 70, I'll also have that linked in the description if you want to see the review on that case. Uh, the bottom orientation for the SATA cables would be uh, a lot better because they look a lot cleaner than the side because the spacing is uh, it's a bit too far, especially for this motherboard. Um, so now that we've talked about that, let's talk about the I.O. The rear I.O. So if you're wondering what was that, that was that just made that sound. I have some of the motherboard uh, things in here, like the CD that it comes with for the drives, uh, for the drivers, and that them two plastic things and the screws. So as you can see, it has these PS2 ports, which are antique. You're never going to probably use them, especially if you have a modern keyboard. It has a DVI port, HDMI. Oh wait, it's actually this way. Let's get this focus. HDMI it has USB 3.2 Gen 1. Then so it has a four set, a four set. It has a set of four USB 3.2 Gen 1s, and then it has USB 2.0 here. So one, it has two of them. It's got an Ethernet and it's got a line in, line out, and mic. So you can uh, do that here, or you can do it from the front of your case. Now the motherboard does have a 3.0 slot here, so if you've got 3.0 on your front I.O., it should work with that. And I also think the Type-C connector, well the first gen of the Type-C connectors, also uses this. So just double check that with your case. So always make sure before buying a motherboard, all the components heat. So as I was saying, just always make sure that it has the correct USB ports and uh other ports that are compatible with your case so as you can see it's got a usb uh usb connector there there usb 3.0 so let's see how many in total it has it has one two um let's see okay so then it has two and then it has one for 3.0 so that's actually okay for a budget motherboard like this and it has let's see how many fans so it's got one cpu fan there and then it has Mm, quite hard to spot there and one system fan there so i think this only has two yep it only has two of them and there's your audio audio in hd audio right let's move on to the last thing so last thing uh, i was actually meant to talk about this before but it's the ram so i've, I've already told you it uh, it uses dual channel dual channel and it's a uh, two dim two dim slots so you can't put more than two dims in so it's ddr4 and it goes up to 3200 megahertz so that's great for amd because uh amd likes around that's at least 3000 megahertz so that's really good however in the bios you can actually make it go uh, a little bit higher than this on the oc um but we will be talking about that in the part two which will be uh which will be coming soon to the channel so stay tuned for that Okay guys, so that's it for the motherboard review. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.